is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Geft or Gete in our major story. President Goodluck Jonathan urges Muslims to use the occasion of Ido Malid to pray for peace in Nigeria. Also in this program, the People's Democratic Party's National Secretary Wale Oladipo says its leaders who joined the All Progressives Congress will return to the fold. The All Progressives Congress says the President, Goodluck Jonathan, lacks the capacity to fight corruption and insecurity. Outside Nigeria, 20 more bodies discovered in the search for the wreckage of crashed Air Asia plane in Indonesia. It's really so good to have you. Stay tuned. Now, details of the headlines and other stories. President Goodluck Jonathan wants Muslims across the country to use the occasion of Eid al Malud celebration to offer special Jumaat prayers for successful and peaceful elections next year. He also promised them and all other Nigerians that the federal government will do all within its powers to ensure that the elections are free, fair, credible and violence free. Jonathan said this in a message to Nigerians on the Islamic holiday. He assured Islamic faithfuls and other Nigerians that on his watch as president, no Nigerian will ever be discriminated against on the basis of religion, ethnicity or social standing. As Muslims celebrate Eid al-Malud, insurgency and insecurity were again top on the agenda with speakers at the event in Ilori condemning the act of Boko Haram as un-Islamic while exhorting the virtues of Prophet Muhammad. They also advised politicians to emulate the Prophet as the 2015 elections draw near. Rashid Rashid attended the celebrations in Ilori. He filed in this report. <laughs> Eid al Maulud, the commemoration of the birth of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which was hitherto celebrated by some Muslim faithfuls, has gained attraction and popularity over the years, with the federal government declaring such day a work free day. In the Ilori Emirate, it was a carnival of a sort as the Maulud was celebrated with fanfare with eminent clerics, politicians, and eminent personalities in attendance. <laughs> Being the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, it is a time for reflection on the issue of insurgency and insecurity ravaging the nation. 
Islamic scholars who took turn to speak on the occasion condemned the spate of insecurity and insurgent attacks, especially by the Boko Haram group, saying the acts of the group is un-Islamic and unrelated to any of the teachings of the Holy Prophet. The Grand Qadi of Quara State, Sali Muhammad, however, calls on insurgents and leaders alike to fear Allah and desist from acts that can threaten the peace and unity of Nigeria. Nigeria today is faced with great security threats all over and challenges. Some of the states are faced with serious security challenges in the form of insurgency. Let us, all leaders and the men, have the fear of God and foster unity among the populace in order to build a united, strong, and varied nation with ample opportunities for all and sundry. Then we Muslims, we need to tell people, I mean to preach, that this uh, insurgency is not in line with Islamic injunctions. So there's no another means that to tell people that it's not in line with Islamic injunctions. For his part, a lecturer at the University of Ilori, Abdelgeni Jaladosu, believes lack of sound education and inculcation of the right ideology sows the seed of insurgency and advise parents to give their words the right education to curb the menace of insurgency. We need for us to ensure that we, we expose our children to solid education, sound education, so that they will not be misinformed, they will not be miseducated, they will not be misled. Sound education is the antisol, the solution to the current problems, problem of instability, problem of insecurity, and problem of misunderstanding. A clarion call was also made to politicians to play by the rules, especially during the electionary period, with the deputy governorship candidate of the PDP in Kwara State, Yin Kaluku, advising parents to train their words to ensure they are not tools for insurgency or thuggery. Another to for the parents to train their words in the way of Allah so that at the end of the day we have cause to say Alhamdulillah. We urge our brothers and sisters to play politics without bitterness and allow the rule of the game to prevail for we only have this country in Nigeria. <laughs> Prayers were later offered for the peace and stability of the nation, especially the issue of insecurity and insurgency, and for the peaceful conduct of the general elections. Rashid Rashid, TV News, Ilori. Or oh, in Lagos, Muslim faithfuls at the Lagos Central Mosque have focused their first Jumat prayer in the year on a call to God to intervene in the country. The prayer, which also preceded the celebration of the birth of Holy Prophet Muhammad, saw a huge crowd with the aim of interceding for the country as well as for thanks for the new year. Amot Hayo was at the Central Mosque in Lagos Island. She felt in this report. As Muslim faithful gathered in large numbers to observe the first Jumat prayer in the year 2015, exhibiting passion in their prayers, worshippers say the reason for their presence is the urgent need for God to intervene in Nigeria, while also calling for peace and unity amongst Nigerians. We ask God to enable us to see the next 2016 again, because anything in this life is God can provide for anybody. Nobody can do it anything for himself. There's a lot of people who join bad gang or something like that in order to enrich their force. But it's not okay. If you fear God, things will be okay for you. We have not to be fighting ourselves. Look at those people who are calling themselves Boko Haram, Boko Haram. People are calling that they are Muslim. They are not a Muslim. If they are a Muslim, they will not behave like that because they will not be Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They doesn't behave like that. So it teach us that we have to be friendly to ourselves. Whatever anything you do for me, I have to forgive you. For this woman leader in Nasfat, Salimat or Reshadi, those who were privileged to witness the new year should not relent in their prayers for the country. We are praying that the coming election should be peaceful, our children should grow well, and we have money at least to take care of our family. There's nothing we can do as most people. We can only pray to Almighty Allah to give us peace in this country. After the serious business of praying for the country and committing their lives to God in the new year,
Some saw the need to extend the hand of fellowship to the physically challenged present by giving alms as commanded by the teachings of Islam. At the first Jumat service in the year 2015, Muslim faithfuls at the central mosque in Lagos are saying that what they had prayed for is that peace reign in the country, especially with the background of the elections coming up very, very soon. Even as they say what they want in prayer, it is left for security agencies and Nigerians to ensure that the peace that everybody wants actually comes to pass. Omotayu Alo, 4TV News, Lagos. The People's Democratic Party says it is confident that some of its former members who are now in the opposition party APC, including former Vice President Atikwa Bubaka, will be brought back to the fold of the party before the general elections holding in February. The National Secretary of the Party, Wale Uladipo, said in Ilei Fair on Friday at the press conference that the party was has started moves to bring back its former members. It says the PDP is working hard in all the states to ensure that President Goodluck Jonathan emerged victorious in the presidential election where he would face steep opposition from Mohammed Buhari of the All Progressives Congress. Oladipo urged all Nigerians to support President Goodluck Jonathan to continue in office beyond 2015 while also perceiving that the president has achieved a lot despite the security challenges confronting the nation. The People's Democratic Party says members of the political class must rededicate themselves to peace, truth and respect for constituted authority, especially as the nation prepares for another round of general elections in February. PDP National Publicity Secretary Olisa Mechu in a statement in Abuja says the fact that the year 2015 unfolded with Ido Malud celebration has great significance and presents an important lesson to all Nigerians to live in peaceful cohabitation and brotherhood. He urged Nigerians to reflect on the occasion of Ido Malud to depend, uh, deepen their commitment to peace and be guarded always by its virtues, truth, goodwill among one another and respect for constituted authority, as taught by Prophet Muhammad. He charged the political class to desist from heating up the polity through inflammatory statements, politics of bitterness and desperation for power, ordering that all must join hands to ensure the conduct of peaceful elections in February. The statement said it is saddening that indecency statements by some politicians fueled violence and killing of innocent Nigerians. Restating PDP's commitment to a credible electioneering and issue-based campaign, Metu said his party would campaign in peace with hope in the hearts of its leaders and members with issues and ideas and with its verifiable record of achievements. The All Progressives Congress, APC, has urged Nigerians to use their votes to express their dissatisfaction with President Goodluck Jonathan for his inability to fight the two main challenges facing the country, corruption and security, despite having six years to do so. The present, uh, president, according to APC, has finally admitted that the two main challenges facing the country are corruption and insecurity and seems to be telling Nigerians to give him more time to tackle the problems. The party added that the truth is the president lacks the capacity to fight and defeat the challenges, whether in six or ten years. APC made this known in a statement issued in Lagos on Friday by its national publicity secretary, Lain Mohammed. It also said the president missed a golden opportunity to take on and defeat the Boko Haram insurgency in the early stages and instead chose to engage in shadow boxing. The statement concluded that it is too late in the day for Jonathan to engage in sophistry over the twin evil of corruption and insecurity. Former Ogun State Governor Gwenga Daniel says rumors making the rounds that he is planning to defeat, uh, defect to the Social Democratic Party from the People's Democratic Party is nothing but a tissue of lies. 
He made this denial in a statement signed by his media aide, Ayo Giwa, where he re-emphasized the fact that he remains in the PDP together with his team in supporters, contrary to reports in some national dailies. He employed his supporters to remain calm, steadfast, and to work assiduously for the success of all PDP candidates, as presented by the National Working Committee at the forthcoming polls. Former Minister of Information Labron Marco has called on Nigerians to vote for dependable and credible candidates in the forthcoming general elections. The former minister, who was speaking in his hometown to his supporters, also urged Nigerians to vote popular candidates, irrespective of their ethnic or religious affiliations. Marco called on political leaders, especially those seeking election into public offices, not to be selfish. He said his audio during the People's Democratic Party primary election in the state will not deter him from concentrating on his ambition to contest and win the governorship election in the state. He urged his supporters to support the re-election bid of President Goodluck Jonathan in 2015, describing him as the best president Nigeria has ever produced. It's Core TV Prime Time News. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to My former students. Happy birthday. Every day, life is made better by the moments of surprise we create for others and for ourselves. Be better. Surprise someone this season and make sure to text 11 to 400 to get a surprise from MTN. MTN, everywhere you go. Good to have you still stay tuned. It's Core TV Prime Time News now. A recap of some of our major headlines. President Goodluck Jonathan urges Muslims to use the occasion of Video Malu to pray for peace in Nigeria. Post Democratic Party's National Secretary Wale Oladipo says its leaders who joined the All Progressives Congress will return to the fold. The All Progressives Congress says the President Goodluck Jonathan lacks the capacity to fight corruption and insecurity. Or for more information, you can catch us on our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's facebook.com slash News. On Twitter, CoreTVNews NG. And on YouTube, youtube.com slash CoreTV, Little Space News. Renowned Islamic cleric Sheikh Hamed Gumi insists that neither President Gulag Jonathan nor his main challenger, Mohammed Buhari, is the type of president Nigerians deserve. He consequently wants both men to step down from the presidential race. The controversial preacher told Court TV News in Kaduna that two leading presidential candidates were advised uh, have divisive characters 
whose campaigns have divided Nigerians across ethnic and religious divides. This is part of the problem we have to deal with. There are interest groups so much behind Jonathan, and there are interest groups so much behind Jinan Bukhari. 21 billion naira shows the intensity by which this interest group is ready to go to see that Jonathan comes back. And also the Buhari group too is mostly followed by the downtrodden of the Nigerian population, the unemployed. They are too in the same way so vehement that their candidates should uh, win. This uh, intensity, this is what I wanted to avoid, so that we are all Nigerians, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are Muslim or Christian, whether north or south, we are all Nigerians. We need one thing, we need peace in this country for it to progress. You cannot do without rich men, and you cannot, you cannot neglect the poor. The rich men, they are enterprising. Oshundai. The Is it was a man, but Rose, Nigeria is a land of opportunity. You can be nothing and you'll be something. And I can remember even uh, Vice President Atiku said that Prof, he lost his father and he, he became the Vice President. All of those people that are in leaders were once in villages, but they as hell. A federal lawmaker, Gyang Pajok, believes that Nigeria would better handle its lingering security challenges under a decentralized police structure. Pajuk, who is also the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Plateau State, says community policing would help nip insurgents and other terrorist acts in the board. This, according to him, is because communities are better placed to swiftly identify and deal with any security threat. Yeah, it's a very dangerous reality that we are faced with as a nation. Well, these are also a reflection of the global trends that we, where the global terror is taking all kinds of dimensions. And I think it's a challenge to our security management. And you know that I'm a strong advocate of the restructuring of the security system as far as Nigeria is concerned. And I believe that we must respond to the increasing wave of crime and violence in a manner that is sharp, that is structured, that is uh, responsive to new realities, reflective of the federal requirements, uh, rather than continue to have a unified control of our security system. I believe that we have reached a stage where we cannot wait until people die before we begin to restructure. So I strongly will say that we must respond effectively by establishing community police, state police, uh, and ensure that investigative capabilities are improved upon. It can also uh, be, 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 you know, decentralized in a manner that you can see us respond to the increasing challenges around. The Nigerian Navy has taken delivery of a new warship called NNS Okpabana as part of its efforts to tackle maritime-related challenges. Chief of Naval Staff Usman Jibrin says the additional of the vessel would boost the Navy's war against maritime crimes, disclosing that Okwabana is the second of the Hamilton-class cutters to join the Navy's fleet between 2014 and 2015. Jibrin says the addition of the ship into the NN fleet will certainly bolster our zeal and menace in our maritime domain and the region, as well as support the regional and global efforts to eliminate transnational maritime threats. He says the vessel's addition has positioned the Navy to do what the nation task of it better, while also praising the federal government for the efforts aimed at recapitalization of the Navy's fleet which is capital intensive on the partnership between Nigeria and China on the upgrading of the Port Court shipyard. The Navy chief says the Chinese team is expected to be in Nigeria before the end of the first quarter of this year. 
members of the Ekiti State House of Assembly who are of the APC extraction have condemned the seating of its PDP members in passing the 2015 appropriation budget into law. One of the APC lawmakers, Mudukbe Ogunlola, who spoke on behalf of her colleagues, condemned the act, describing it as null and void, while maintaining that the PDP lawmakers have been suspended. It's an illegality that cannot stand. It's null and void. How can several members sit when, when the Constitution... You see, it's a pity that when the Constitution favors us, we want to cite the Constitution. As, as the legal backing. But when the constitution does not favor us, we discard it. They are suspended members. The 19 members we, uh, that consist of the, 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 the principal officers from the speaker to the last sat and we, were, we, we formed co quorum. Then apart from that, we were 19. We suspended them. As far as the Kitty State is concerned, they, they, they are, they are, what they, their action is null and void. Ugunlola also challenged the PDP members to provide proof of the additional assembly members that joined them in sitting to form the quorum, especially those purported to be APC members that have joined the ranks of the PDP, with the PDP lawmakers continuing to cite security reasons for not disclosing the identity of the said members. We are, we are one. And for them to allege that they have some of the members sitting with them, we have been saying this. Uh, we have been insisting on this, that they should come out and name them. Because he who alleges must be able to prove. Renowned poet Ni Oshundari has challenged lecturers in the nation's high institution to do what they are paid for and stop chasing money to the detriment of the nation's future. Oshundari... This is a dying country, I tell you. The level of teaching and the universities have gone down. It says teachers must teach the students properly while also challenging students to know their rights and ask the teachers to do better than just dictating notes. Oshundari, who is speaking at the University of Ibadan, says the future of the nation is being killed gradually with the attitude of the lecturers. This is a dying country, I tell you. And it is we that we have to cure this cancer. We deceive ourselves too much. If you as a teacher are there, and you know you are not teaching the students, as I also ask people in the English department, is this the way I taught you? I ask that with a lot of confidence and boldness, because I know I didn't teach people that way. Why don't we complain? We produce first class, second class, or time every time we get promotion. All of us are becoming professors. Oh my what? I tell many of our colleagues, if you teach the way you teach here, if you go to America to teach that way, you won't last one week. It is not only that you will be fired, your students will take you to court. Students, know your rights. Ask your teachers questions. Don't just become receptacles. The teacher comes. He dictates notes to you, you put the thing down, at the end of the semester, you get your A or your B. We'll take another break and be back with business, sports and stories outside Nigeria. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Professor. My former students. is made better by the moments of surprise we create for others and for ourselves. Be better. Surprise someone this season and make sure to text 11 to 400 to get a surprise from MTN. MTN. Everywhere you go.
Welcome back now to business. The Nigerian Communications Commission has advised telecom service providers on the early submission of their statistical data. The Commission gave the charge in notification of revised timelines for submission of statistical data. The notification of revised timeline for submission of statistical data was signed by the NCC Director, Public Affairs Tony Ojibu. The regulatory body says the request for the submission of data was in furtherance of its commitment to provide up-to-date statistics on the telecommunications industry. The telecoms regulator says all internet service providers are required to submit their monthly statistical information via a template to be emailed to them with the data to be submitted on the first working day of the month, while the final deadline is the seventh day of the next month. The NCC also says ISPS are required to submit their annual statistical data on the first work day in January, while the deadline for submission is on January 15th. The River State's Governor, Rotimi Amichi, says the monthly federal allocation to the state had been slashed by over 50 percent as a, res a result of the dwindling oil prices. Amichi, who disclosed this during the New Year message broadcast live, explained that his administration would continue to review its finances in order to caution the negative impact the reduction had on the people. The governor said that apart from the reduction in the state's monthly allocation, the seeding of oil wells in Soko and Eche to the neighborhood states by the National Boundary Commission had also affected the finances of the state. Amitra expressed sadness that there had been no plan to return the lost oil wells to River State in spite of the evidence and favor of the state. He, however, said that his administration would not relent in its campaign for the return of the oil wells. The governor said that while his administration inherited a monthly wage bill of about 2.5 billion naira, the River State was now managing a wage bill of about 9.2 billion naira every month, stating that his administration will review some of its projects in the face of fresh financial constraints. Amechi promised that his government would not only pursue this project and programs, but would document them properly for handover. All right, it's time to join Brownson Umana on sports. Thanks for staying with us on our prime time news tonight. I am Brownson Uwana. Nigeria international goalkeeper Vincent Eyama has been selected as the best shot stopper in League One for 2014. The 32 year old was selected as the league best goalkeeper for 2014 despite Lille stuttering start to 2014 2015 season. Eyama has played in every minute for Lille's 56 league matches since he returned from his loan spell at Israeli club Maccabi Tel Aviv in 20, 2013. This is the second successive year that Hayama has been selected as Lille's number one most outstanding goalkeeping talent. African Nations Cup host Equatorial Guinea has fired coach Andoni Gyoti just over three weeks before the tournament. The former Athletic Bilbao centre-back told RFI that the Equatorial Guinea Football Association informed his agent of their decision. However, Anthony refused to comment on the matter. Equatorial Guinea are preparing for the international showpiece in Portugal and will kick off the tournament against Congo in Bata on January 17 before facing their other Group A opponent, Burkina Faso and Gabon. Liverpool captain Steven Gerrard called his decision to leave at the end of the season the toughest of his life. The 34-year-old out of contract this summer joined the Reds aged nine and has scored 180 goals in 695 games. He added he will continue to play but not for a potential rival as he could never contemplate facing Liverpool. Gerard has been linked with a move to Major League Soccer in the United States of America. Finally on our sport news tonight to the world of athletics, drug cheats in sports face a minimum of four-year ban under new rules which comes into effect from January 1st. Changes to the World Anti-Doping Code which nullifies anti-doping rules for global sports 
have increased the suspension for doping for two years. Other changes will see less leniency given for missed tests, but possibly reduce bans for helping investigation. The reverse code was agreed by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, in November after over 18 months of research by the governing body. And that's my final whistle on Sport News tonight. A very big thanks for watching. I am Brown Sin Owana. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. And from sports, we go straight to uh, stories from the Air Asia recovery. More bodies have been recovered from the Java Sea five days after the Air Asia flight QZ8501 crashed, bringing the total bodies recovered so far to 30. Indonesian officials say operations to recover victims continue but no survivors have been found with the arrival of specialist equipment to aid in the search for the plane and its flight data recorder or black box. Officials, however, say the equipment will be used later on Saturday because the high waves in the search area has made the use of the equipment dangerous. Though it looks increasingly likely that the plane is almost certainly at the bottom of the relatively shallow Java Sea, but the cause of the crash is not yet known. Some of the recovered bodies were said to be strapped in their seats when they were discovered with 20 of the bodies discovered earlier on Friday. It's Core TV Prime Time News. Just before we wrap off our bulletin for tonight, a recap of our major headlines. President Gulag Jonathan urges Muslims to use the occasion of Ido Malu to pray for peace in Nigeria. We also told you that the People's Democratic Party's National Secretary Wale Oladipo says its leaders who joined the All Progressives Congress will return to the fold. There was a report that the All Progressives Congress says the President, Goodluck Jonathan, lacked the capacity to fight corruption and insecurity. That's our show for tonight. Thank you so much for staying on with us. On behalf of the entire news crew, I am Geft Ogetego. Have a lovely night, guys.